Milwaukee's size advantage over Golden State fueled them to a blowout win where they led by as many as 26. Bouncing back from an ugly loss in Houston, Chris Middleton was productive in just his sixth game of the season after recovering from left wrist surgery. In addition to Adetokounmpo shooting 9 for 26, Milwaukee was also without Drew Holiday, albeit facing a Warrior team without Andrew Wiggins. This same Warriors team dominated the Boston Celtics a few nights ago, and following Golden State's 7-0 start to begin the game, they were handled seamlessly by 2021's NBA champion Bucks. The interior defense from Giannis and Brooke Lopez forced the Warriors to settle for contested jumpers, and the Brew City's valued three-point sniping specialists did their job. Before going further in depth, splash thumbs up and subscribe. Just 10.9% of my audience members are, so if even a quarter of you were, that'd be super helpful. I can't thank you enough for supporting my channel. While he shot a combined 16 for 43 over the last two games, as constantly made clear whenever a Bucks video of mine is posted, Giannis Adetokounmpo is the very best slasher the game of basketball has ever seen. I don't think anyone in their right mind is worried about the last couple games. From November 21st up until last week on December 7th, we're talking about a player who scored at least 30 points in 8 straight games. However, while Giannis just racked up his NBA third most 15th 30 point game on Tuesday, which included a rare three point ball to go along with 12 boards, five dimes, a block, and a steal, in terms of field goal percentage, it was his second worst performance of the season. That said, Adetokounmpo's rough shooting night from the field was salvaged by the imposing physicality he was playing with, a welcome sight after rookie Jabari Smith Jr. of the Houston Rockets had his breakout moment in the outing prior when he held Adetokounmpo to a season worst 16. But the next time out, Golden State not having anyone to match up with Giannis' athleticism and force allowed him to draw fouls at an excessive rate and ultimately finish with 17 free throw attempts. And Warrior fans are going to complain about the foul shooting discrepancy, and there's validity to that in some cases, but free throws, at least at a high volume, don't come unless you're playing with physicality, and quite frankly, Golden State was shying away. The Bucks' defensive force made the dubs settle for three-pointers. Golden State did knock down 40% of their 50 attempts from out there, but on the other end, the defending champs have allowed at least 114 points in every road game. The Bucks were taking advantage by relentlessly attacking their matchups in one-on-ones. The Bucks were playing with ruthless force and committed to generating the best look possible each time down. Conversely, the Warriors looked shook on both ends of the court, as they have all year on the road. Even though we've known for nearly a decade now that Giannis has a guard-esque handle off the dribble, rangy ground coverage, and a 7'4 reach, personally, sequences like the one you're about to see still leave my jaw dropped to this day. He grabs a contested rebound, momentum crosses back and forth with Kevon Looney draped all over him before splitting the late help of Steph and finishing with a poster. Mind-boggling coast-to-coast attack that the Greek freak pulls off on the regular. I want to focus on the defense for Milwaukee. It was overwhelming for Golden State to get clear attacks on. The Dubs were missing layups all game, much to do with the Bucks' imposing versatility on the interior. Give credit to Brooke Lopez for being the most elite rim protector on the planet right now. The criticism about Lopez in his early days playing in Brooklyn was that he couldn't rebound the basketball well for a 7-footer. That's still the case, as Lopez averages only 5.9 boards. That said, the reason we haven't heard that critique for a long time is because of what Giannis does up front. In each of the years Lopez has been on the Bucks, Adetokounmpo has been at least top 8 among players in boards per night. Giannis was as high as number 2 in this category 3 seasons ago in 2019-20. This year, he's the NBA's 4th leading rebounder. However, Lopez makes up for his lack of board getting by averaging 2.9 blocks, most by far in the NBA. The gap between Brooke and the 2nd ranked Miles Turner in blocks exceeds that of the gap between Turner and the 5th best rebounder in Mitchell Robinson. How about the revolutionary three-level defense from the franchise player? We'll rightfully obsess about his slashing, but you can't forget Giannis is a five-time all-defensive team player and was 2019-20's DPOI. In all but one of his pro campaigns, the Greek freak has averaged at least a block, which has been good enough to rank top 10 at his position for nine consecutive years in that department. Giannis leads all NBA players in defensive rating, just surpassing Jarrett Allen. I think we can all admit Giannis is one of the best all-around defenders anyone's ever witnessed. 
How about the return of the man who the Bucks missed so damn much in 2022's playoffs, Chris Middleton? Playing his very first stretch of 5-on-5 five -five basketball against everyone else who's pretty much in mid-season form has proved itself to be extremely tough based off the rustiness so far. Before the game against the Dubs, Chris was forced to leave a game against Houston due to an ankle sprain. Middleton's overall movement just isn't as fluid as we're accustomed to quite yet, but he seemed to have found his flow in Milwaukee's most recent W. Chris posted his first 20-point outing of the season, which came on a 65.79% true shooting clip and included three triples against the defending champs. Around Giannis and Chris, perfectly suited sharpshooters in Brooke Lopez, who's number four among centers in three-point percentage, Javon Carter, who's number five among point guards in distance efficiency, and Grayson Allen, who's number seven among shooting guards from deep range. It's statistically proven that this Bucks roster is built to make defenses pick their poison. Milwaukee's put together this roster in a very similar way the Orlando Magic built around Dwight Howard in the mid-2000s by trusting their main low post weapon in this case Giannis, and acquiring a flurry of three-point specialists around him. Chris Middleton's the exception to that. That Orlando team didn't have nearly as good of a second option as him. Question is, why or why not can the Bucks do what they did in 2021 and win the 2023 championship? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out, and the top five commenters by December 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Shout out to Bose, whose take could still stand despite the Bucks beating up the Warriors in their last game. Bose says the Warriors can definitely build off this win against Boston. Kaminga put in huge minutes and proved that he's really starting to step up on the defensive end to help shoulder some of the defensive burden that Draymond, Wiggins, and Clay tend to take when guarding the other team's best players. Having another option defensively who can aggressively attack the rim will be huge for the Warriors come the postseason. Well written take, seven more days until the Speaks board resets and I announce my Speaks winners. As always, thanks for watching, have a good one.